name is Debbie Potts, and I am bringing you Dr. Elizabeth Bright back on the podcast to talk about hormone health as we age for men and women. So what's your motivation, your drive to keep you go- getting into this thyroid health? Why do you feel it's so important? Because it rules every function of the body. So uh, actually, the first thing that's formed is uh, after the endoderm and the feet it's not even fetus yet, is the thyroid. And the thyroid actually grows the rest of the body, causes the the development of the tissue. I don't know if you've heard of dermatomes, how dermatomes are the the spine, you know, when there's a little tiny fetal spine, all the tissues are connected and then you grow. That's why you can have referred pain in different tissues very far away from the spinal nerve. And it's kind of the same thing with the thyroid. The thyroid regulates every tissue in the body. So if there's an issue, it could be any tissue in the body. Well, iodine is one of them. The the iodine insufficient, you know, deficiency in iodine is only getting worse. Uh, There's so many substances that I talk about in my in my last book. uh, Good fat is good for girls, puberty, and adolescence. Are the many many substances that interfere that prevent the absorption of iodine. And we talk about anti-nutrients all the time as carnivores, you know, they're spinach and that will prevent zinc and iron absorption. But there are so many substances that will actually prevent the absorption of iodine. Added to that, there isn't any iodine anymore because it used to be only goiter belts. hundred years ago, it was goiter belts where actually the, the, the soil didn't have enough iodine. So the animals weren't eating it. So we didn't get it. Now it's way beyond that. It's everywhere because of fluoride and PFAs and, you know, all of these substances that are inescapable in our environment. So yeah, everybody's iodine deficient. Iodine is important for every cell in the body. It's an antiviral, antifungal. It's an antibacterial. It supports our immune system and it is a heavy metal chelator. So the 50,000 supplements people are taking, they don't need if they have sufficient iodine. If breast fibroids are caused by <clears throat> iodine deficiency, uh, cancer is caused by iodine deficiency, um, uterine fibroids, it just goes on and on. So Lugol's is what I recommend because it is the easiest to take. Lugol's drops, it has to be what used to be called 15% is the actual Jean Lugol recipe. Uh, there's available two and 5%. I recommend 5%. You can take 2%. You just have to double the drops. If you are sufficient, two to four drops should be enough for your daily needs. But the problem is most people are insufficient. So how you figure that out, that's usually there I know there are a couple of labs in the US, one lab actually, there's a 24 hour iodine loading test, right? Mm. I don't I don't expect anybody to do that. Um, you could do a simple patch test, see how long the iodine lasts on your skin. Uh, practitioners know how to, um, I mean, when I have patients, I give them that information, mm-hmm. tell them what to look for. But iodine, the thyroid take, takes what it needs, then what else is left? The rest of the body takes it. The, the thyroid needs six a minimum of six milligrams when you're sufficient. Mm-hmm. The breasts need five milligrams when you're sufficient. So we're already miles away from the 150 microgram RDA, which is confusing mm-hmm. everybody. So body parts that need iodine are thought men men have prostates that that mm-hmm. needs iodine. Uh, the reason why adolescent women, uh, pubertal girls have issues, would be without enough iodine be, is because those the, the the building of sexual characteristics is really directed by thyroid hormone. So puberty is driven by thyroid hormone. It is regulated by thyroid hormone. If you don't have enough iodine, you're going to have problems with puberty. So that's the only difference. Got it. So more tissue, breasts, uterus. These are two big. Those are tissues that require they have space right so Mm -hmm. prostate is a lot smaller that's really the only reason why people with those tissues and people without those tissues would require um more iodine during puberty however stress can also make you need more iodine 
iodine is gone if there's a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. Like any nutrient, chronic stress, yes, or just being having, you know, substances that are pollutants, that's stressful too. So with the iodine, Rubles iodine drops, put them in water. Put them in water, you... put, put them in gel caps, those vegetable gelatin caps. Okay. No, iodine salt is terrible. It once you open it, it all the iodine evaporates and it's also a hard, it's a cheap uh, form sodium iodide it's not a good form there's actually been literature that there's been more Hashimoto since they instituted uh, iodized salt it depends if they have Hashimoto's the how inflamed is their thyroid so it, if you can have iodine and it can kind of wake up the thyroid because what if you have nodules you have extra pieces on your thyroid you have like your thyroid grew another leg that part is going to respond to the iodine that part if it has follicular tissue might make hormones the whole point is that we have to calm all that down. doesn't mean the thyroid doesn't mean need iodine. It means that the thyroid is bigger and it might produce more, which might make a person feel hyperthyroid temporarily until we can calm all that down and make that extra tissue go away. The ranges yeah. are too wide. That's easy to say. The range is looking for uh, cancer and coma. They're looking for you being dead. They're not looking for you functioning functioning well. I think that people should be, I mean, the, what the bottom of the range is, what, 2.3? I think you should be at least at 3.4. Free T4 Four. should be mid-range, yeah. So um, TSH is kind of irrelevant because half of the body's tissues don't even talk to TSH. So you've got deidinases, which are selenocysteines, which actually are receptors that are regulating how much thyroid hormone that tissue wants, right? So deidinase one is liver and kidney tissue. And that one uses TSH to send signals to the thyroid. But the rest of the tissues, the central nervous system, imagine that. Uh, so the brain and the, the musculoskeletal tissue is deidinase two. That does not send any message to the to the thyroid that does not use TSH to send a message to the thyroid. If there is a substance that it's using as a messenger, nobody's looked for it. So basing everything on TSH is very irresponsible. There are plenty of papers that have indicated that TSH is unreliable. You can have a person who's incredibly hypothyroid, has low free T3 and low free T4, but has in range TSH. Now, in some places, they only test TSH. They test pregnant women, only test T TSH. And we know that low thyroid function causes learning disabilities. Uh, constipation, um, uh, you know, arrhythmia, uh, hair loss, anxiety, depression, fibromyalgia mm -hmm. associated with, you know, we, we uh, there's many, 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 Willebrand syndrome. I mean, there's all these syndromes that are associated with low thyroid function, but they have a name and they, they don't really, you know, they don't address it. They don't address thyroid. It's bipolar syndrome. That's hypothyroidism. Because on, um, if you don't address thyroid issues, then you're going to have other autoimmune issues. It's kind of the first one. So if it's not properly addressed, literally people have antibodies and doctors say they won't go down. I get them down. They go down. If it's properly addressed, the antibodies go down. So your immune system is using a, an antibody, it's an expression of things are not going well with the immune system. If there's no response, the antibodies keep going up, the body will have to find a different antibody, a different tissue to attack, to express the fact that something is irregular. Eating more of a carnivore Food is based very diet. important. Yeah. Absolutely, because all the nutrition, I mean, you can't just... You can't, you don't just need iodine, you need zinc, you need iron, you need uh, a good, you, you don't need anti-nutrients. You definitely don't need carbs. You don't need any stimulants. You don't need inflammation. It's the inflammation that is caused by the deficiencies. So deficiencies will cause inflammation, um, stimulants, caffeine, sugar, fake sugars, ultra marathons, saunas. Ice baths, these are all stimulating drugs, uh, nicotine, cannabis. They are all stimulants, antidepressants, benzodiazepines. These will all 
uh, be seen by the immune system as an issue. What do you find people mm-hmm. do best with starting out, realizing they have low thyroid or hormone imbalances? Oh, definitely iodine and high fat carnivore because you, the high fat, you're going to reduce inflammation, which is going to take a lot of pressure off the thyroid. You take away the stimulants, the stimulants, you're taking a lot of pressure off of your immune system. What's going on? Well, yeah. I mean, if you don't feel well after you do these things, I mean, what the problem that's cold therapy, what they're stimulants, right? Mm -hmm. What happens? The body sees stress as as something that you're supposed you're running away from danger so it produces cortisol but if you're chronically running away from danger you're messing up your cortisol levels your body it's chronic stress mm-hmm. chronically jumping in an ice bath chronically going into a sauna is chronic stress so it feels really good just like drugs feel really good because cortisol says whoa you're in danger let's run 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 let me make her feel good let me make her her you know her joints not hurt for like, you know, an hour because she's got to get away from that tiger. But that's not going to fix it long term. It's just going to make it worse. And that would include fasting as well. Absolutely. Fasting is Mm -hmm. causes cortisol levels to spike, which will then cause over a long period of time, uh, low cortisol levels. I don't believe in hacking. I mean, I'm, I'm, what I'm talking about is a, is a normal human diet. We evolved to, uh, hunt, rest, eat meat, nibble on meat, maybe have some dry meat in our, you know, whatever, where we carry things, rest, draw on some walls, hunt. I mean, bio, nobody was hacking. Nobody was biohacking. Biohacking is, is market driven. And it's basically, it's another supplement when just a good diet will do. It's uh, making a lot of money for people and it's not necessary. I'm always getting people off their hundreds of dollars worth of sup- supplements, which I folate, because I've talked about it in my book, it was invented in the 1940s. We don't need folate. Folate equals B12. If you eat meat, you will not need fo- folate, but now they're testing mm-hmm. for it. So there are things that people are perpetuating. The system is perpetuating to make you think you need when you don't. Vitamin D is an animal fat. All fat soluble vitamins the way it's supposed to work is we're supposed to synthesize it from the fat we eat. If you don't eat fat, yeah, there you won't have any, you'll have to supplement, but why, why not eat fat? Eat a high fat carnivore diet. If you have adequate thyroid function, that vitamin D synthesis works just fine. And K and all the other fat soluble. I can't use sunscreen. So I'm on the water in the morning and I actually even got, my daughter bought me some tallow, uh, sunscreen. And even that gave me, I only put it on my nose because the rest of me doesn't seem to need it. And that didn't work. I got pimples. So now I'm looking, I look like a fool because I have this silicone thing on my nose and glasses to hold it and a hat. So when I get out like 500 meters, I put it on. My youngest daughter said, I'm not going anywhere with you. And I said, you don't have to be on the water with me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm 1K out. Mm-hmm. Nobody notices. But I have no, my skin is great and I don't have to use anything. The question people always have, do I need fiber for improving gut health, short chain fatty acid no. production, robotics? No, no, none of it, nothing. You don't need it. If you are, if you have adequate thyroid function, you'll eat. I mean, I don't want you to eat fiber. I want you to eat meat and fat because that's how we evolved to eat. We don't need fiber to, we don't need fiber. We don't need fiber. If you're constipated, it's because you're hypothyroid. The microbiome is uh, the carnivore microbiome is completely different from the sell you a ton of supplement microbiome. So the whole microbiome thing came from some studies done on African adolescents in the eighties. It doesn't matter that we don't have a huge, uh, um, a huge variety of bacteria. We should only have the ones that we were, we evolved as humans to have. And that's the carnivore microbiome. So basically people who have, I mean, we did not evolve to eat fruit and vegetables or dairy. So of course it's causing problems. It's not, it's Mm -hmm. not the lack of these um, species. Your microbiome changes in two weeks when you go carnivore and all the left. Mm -hmm. left, You may have some die off. You may have some bloating because those vegetable eating ones die, but 
the ones that are supposed to be there for meat and um, fat are just fine. The peptide is actually an enzyme that regulates the species in your micro in your intestines, right? The bacterial species, the bacterial population. And that is regulated by thyroid hormone. With functional lab testing, would you suggest people to run a full thyroid panel and measure cortisol at all? Or salivary, only salivary, yeah. Salivary. So as a serum cortisol doesn't mean anything. It's attached to protein, so it's unreliable. Mm, so salivary cortisol. So you're getting the measurements four times? Yeah, four times usually. Yeah. And that's a good way for people to start and then get a full thyroid panel. What would you include on a thyroid panel for people to order? Free T3, free T4, and uh, two, the two antibodies, uh, antithyroid peroxidase and antithyroglobulin. No, for the antibodies, anything that's above the range would be an issue. The only thing that the doctor says is that they can't, they they won't go down. That's the unfortunate part. They will. There's go no down. solution. You can get them to go into remission, right? No, so there's well, no. They just they literally just want to cut your thyroid out. They just wanted to get to the point where they cut it because they don't think it can be addressed. They don't think the autoimmune issue will be addressed. So you can have an inflamed thyroid and not have positive antibodies. I have plenty of patients who have inflamed thyroids. To me, Hashimoto's is an inflamed thyroid. I mean, Hashimoto's was a guy who in, you know, I don't know, 1914 uh, found, took out four thyroids from women who had goiter and it was the lymph tissue that was inflamed. So it's really, if any of the thyroid tissue is inflamed, you have an inflamed thyroid. If you have antibodies that are elevated on your thyroid panel, what th should they do to start with? Um, reduce inflammation, reduce stress. The immune system becomes autoimmune. So basically an immune system, which is made up of cortisol, a bunch of hormone, you know, the steroid hormone cascade and neurotransmitters like a, a epinephrine and norepinephrine, catecholamines, anything like you bang your knee, Everything that goes to your knee when you bang it is part of your immune system. But if you're banging your knee every single hour, your immune system will stop responding. It will it won't know how to react anymore. It'll become it'll go rogue. So in the sense, it'll become autoimmune. So it'll be, you know, banging it will be banging your knee instead of you banging your knee. It, would you include breath work in there, different stress management techniques? Breath work is great. Anything that moves you from sympathetic to parasympathetic tone. So we know that the parasympathetic rest and digest, sympathetic is fight or flight. You need to get out of fight or flight. And breath work can get you out of fight or flight. Um, listening to music. I mean, there are all kinds of ways that you can get, you have to get your concentration of you know go from sympathetic to parasympathetic that there are all kinds of techniques to do that in any you like eating fat is one of them eating fat how yeah, you great. feel i know it's so when you yeah because the problem is that people are so hyped up on stress and stimulants they don't know how they feel they can't feel how they feel so when you remove all these things you don't need all those numbers anymore because you just wake up in the morning and you see how you feel